And you thought Lori Lightfoot was a nightmare. Chicago's new woke mayor has signed in and vows to tax the rich and big business to pay for progressive agenda. His major firms vow to pull out of city. I, we've been co- covering a ton of business closures on this podcast because at some point in time, the economics do not make sense. So it's not a matter of opinion whether this is impacting this. It's like, all right, you push big business out, they leave. Simple as that. But these cities, these crazy cities and these crazy mayors who go down one political road don't seem to get that. Hey, we'll just tax the big business till we don't have any. Ah, there'll be enough around. They'll stick around. They'll still want to do business here. Yeah, maybe. Let's check out which business in Chicago is saying, hey, you threaten to do that, we'll leave. We'll be like Elon in California. You shut us down, we're opening up. You don't let us open up, we're moving. Hey, we're moving anyway. Moving to Austin. Yeah. That's the kind of thing we got going on in Chicago. Let's check it out. Let's get into it. Here we go. Companies are already vowing to leave Chicago over additional taxes promised by its new mayor. Uh, the new mayor got uh, sworn in, I believe, on Monday. Lori Lightfoot out. I think we are going to look at this new mayor and go, wow, Lightfoot was, uh, she was basically a reformed compared to this guy. And I, I, I think that is how this might turn out. So over additional taxes promised by its new mayor, a progressive newcomer tasked with addressing the city's dwindling image under predecessor Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot was so, te- I should say, Beetlejuice was so terrible for the city of Chicago. Just tone deaf, ignored everything. Ah, this is great. It's all fine. It's good. Violence is down. Never mind the shootings. Never mind the murders. Yeah, nobody's recording violence anymore. Nobody's reporting it. So we're going to take that as a good thing. And everybody who's, you know, criticizing me is just not inclusive enough. You're like, okay, but look at what's happening to Chicago. And it's not good. It's not good, right? And you can't spin that in a good way. Big business just leaving left and right. Sworn in early Monday, mayor-elect Brandon Johnson beat out more moderate Chicago school CEO Paul Vallis earlier this month to earn the hallowed spot, something business leaders like CME Group Incorporated are already peeved about. That's the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. They're pissed because they know they're going to get hammered on. This guy, this progressive mayor, he's not going to come up with anything great to switch the city around, to get the city moving in a new direction. You need somebody that's more moderate. You need somebody that is, you know, even a tad bit conservative to work on your whole public safety issue. Because if you don't have public safety issue squared away, it ain't going to work big picture, right? It's just not. We're watching that unfold in real life. Seattle, San Francisco, LA, I mean, New York, Washington, D.C., you're seeing this happen in a lot of these major big cities that have gone down this road, right? Appearing on a podcast Sunday, the chief executive of the country's foremost financial derivatives exchange, Terry Duffy, voiced his distaste over additional taxes planned by the ex-union organizer, whose upset win was endorsed by Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, what a joker. Uh, Some of his stuff, you look at it and you go, Oh, okay. That's really going to fly. Uh, good luck with that. Yeah. Cause socialism always really works well. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All righty then. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, so intended to dig the city out of its current financial hole, the increases are aimed at high earners and companies headquartered in the Windy City, whom, as CME is already proving, are likely to put up a political fight. What happened when Amazon said, or when the city of Seattle tried to tax Amazon, they literally had a tax just for Amazon. Amazon said, mm, not so much. Headquarters too, elsewhere. Employees, Bellevue. Eh, to that, to Seattle. That's literally what they said, right? I mean, in in, in no uncertain terms. Because we have Shama Sawant. She's our socialist. She's literally a member of the socialist whatever party. And... um 
Oh, just terrible, terrible for the city of Seattle. But city of, city of Seattle residents, they go, they went down that road. They voted her in and you get what you vote for, whether you want to believe it or not. And it's not necessarily been good, right? It's like, I think, yeah, because socialism always works so well, right? <laughs> Apart from the array of tax increases, Johnson, a relative unknown in a heated mayoral race, has his hands full after taking the reins Monday, facing an influx of migrants in need of shelter and summer months that historically breed violent crime. Because people get worked up, they get too hot, and they shoot one another. It's just what happens, right? And yeah, and they've just been said. <laughs> Mayor Lori Lightfoot, help! We got eight thousand immigrants that have come, illegal migrants that have come. Help! Yeah, there's millions at the southern border that have come through in the last couple of years. I mean, it's just it, the whole hypocrisy of the sanctuary cities is uh, is to me. I mean, it makes sense. These people are all talk, and they've they've got really nothing going on positively. And now this guy's going to come in and, ah, let's tax all these guys. They're the backbone of our tax basis, but screw them. We need these programs over here because, you know, we need these programs over here. Speaking to the Odd Lots podcast about 24 hours before the ceremony, that we'll see the former Chicago school teacher succeed as similarly assigned predecessor. Duffy made it clear his firm is willing to join several businesses like Tyson. We podcasted on that. Caterpillar. We talked about that one for about 45 minutes and Boeing in relocating, huh? Tyson foods, Caterpillar, Boeing, relocating, leaving. Interesting, right? If Johnson does not heed his and other warnings, he cited those companies as this is what we're going to do. And that, that business decisions, you know, when people say, Hey, don't get upset. It's only business. It's true. It's based on business should not be based on emotion. I think Gordon Gecko said that best, right? To Bud Fox back in the original Wall Street. That was one of the greatest movies of all time. I dare you. I dare you to say it's not. That was a great movie. I watched that. That came out mm, the spring of my senior year in high school just as I was kind of really figuring out what I was going to do. And I thought the $900,000 penthouse uh, condo that Bud Fox bought with Daryl Hannah and she shacked up with them and she decorated the, the heck out of it. Um, I thought that was the, just the greatest condo ever. Cause I mean, a condo at 900 grand. Can you imagine that? Here we are, whatever it is. I don't know how many years it's been since I graduated from high school. A lot. However many of those years are later, 900 grand. Yeah, it's still a lot of money, but it's, you know, those, those ratios have changed, right? Mr. Johnson has, Mr. Johnson has no legal authority to impose a transaction tax on my business. Boom, said Duffy, adding that the relatively green politician should focus on the gargantuan task of fighting the city's crime epidemic instead of putting the squeeze on businesses. But that is not what this type of politician does. He squeezes big business because big business is there to be squeezed till there's nothing more to squeeze, till things go wildly sideways. And then you've got the doom loop. <laughs> you know, I mean, just all this stuff is kind of coming at once, right? Duffy, whose firm is worth an estimated $66 billion and is responsible for both Chicago and New York's mercantile exchanges, sarcastically sniped Johnson should not get too bucked down on how he's going to short-term think the slipshod plans. Don't think about, don't overthink this because it ain't going the right way. And whatever you come up with, it's kind of like uh, measure uh, uh, 110 in Portland which decriminalized drugs and everybody's kind of looking at that going, mm, you know, it didn't really work out the way that we're going to get more addiction services. We didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Decriminalizing drugs. Well, I really didn't see this one coming. And now you got a bunch of drug zombies walking around Portland with no hope for them to get into treatment of any kind. He added of Johnson, who for the past four years served as a commissioner in crime ridden Cook County, he's going to raise taxes on certain people in order to fit his agenda. That's just what he's going to do. But you got to remember, people of Chicago voted this in. This is what they want. This is what they want. Now that they don't have any Walmarts left, right? <laughs> that aside, Johnson already has a full agenda ahead of himself Monday after arriving at Michelle Clark Magnet School in Austin to be inaugurated. 
the ceremony kicking off at 10.30. Who cares? At that point, the Democrat, accompanied by a tight security detail. Now, why does he have a tight security detail? I, uh, what's up with that? Yeah. Made his way to whatever, where Lightfoot and others were in attendance. Don't care. Having beat out Lightfoot and a host of other less progressive Democrats earlier in the month, well, Lori Lightfoot didn't even make it to the general election, right? She didn't even make it out of the primary. So bad. She was so bad. And this guy's going to be worse. And the people of Chicago, congrats. You voted him in. Enjoy. Have fun. Because I will literally be podcasting about this for days, weeks, months, years. You know the drill. Johnson takes the reins as his predecessor continues to face ire from fed up citizens over the city's current state, which deteriorated during the pandemic to crisis levels and has since failed to recover. Seems to be a common theme, seems to be a common pattern, right? What we got going on. Officials from both parties have slammed lawlessness seen in the city under Lightfoot after she made the controversial decision to slash $55.9 million from the Chicago Police Department budget in 2020 during protests for defund the police, a movement that Johnson supports. Mm. And we have seen how that plays out, and it is not good. But, you know, some knuckleheads don't get the whole cause and effect of if you don't have enough cops, things tend to become a little bit more lawless. Criminals don't have that, you know, thing hanging over their head like, if I get caught, I might go to jail. Now they don't even have the thought of if I get caught because there aren't enough cops to do that, right? And, And then you've got district attorneys who won't, you know, prosecute them and they won't probably do much, you know, jail time. Just not happening not happening. Lightfoot, meanwhile, instead of addressing the city's notorious gun violence, made it a point during her time in office to give herself a 5% raise, despite having a salary well over 200 grand. I'm sure she did. Sure she did. She also raised salary thresholds for not only her position, but the city clerk and treasurer as well. Shortly after performing an abrupt about face on the defund the police policy she campaigned on in August of 2021 and increasing crime and walk walkouts by the city's peace officers, compounding the unrest at the time were riots by Black Lives Matter and defund the police supporters, movements that both Lightfoot and more recently Johnson had touted during their respective campaigns. Of course they did. And then people wonder, why isn't Chicago safe? Well, you defunded the police by how much? Mm, Yeah. At the time, the city recorded its deadliest year in decades, with 2021 seeing 797 murders. (sighs) Most recorded since the mid-1990s, crime, particularly shootings, has since persisted, with overall crimes up by more than 43% from last year. City of Chicago's police department, meanwhile, had also been increasingly at odds with Lightfoot, whose championing of progressive policies have also put her in the crosshairs of conservative critics across the country, myself included. And I I certainly lean more conservative in a lot lot of my business policy. Yeah, you bet. Because the other side just doesn't make any effing sense at all, right? But to say I'm a true conservative, I would say no, because I'm – probably more moderate in a lot of my thinking and a lot of my stuff. I just am. I'm just like, no, we don't have to go to that extreme. We don't have to go to that extreme either. You just got to do things that are reasonable. You just got to do things that make sense. And a lot of this craziness does not make any sense. Even though, you know, these people champion on defund the police, greatest concept ever. Well, show me a city where that's worked out well. Show me one. Uno. So show me one where they've done it in like North American style and you just defund the police and you don't have enough cops to go around. Show me how that's worked out well. Here's a crime. Here's a crime deal. All right. So murders have gone down slightly and shooting incidents have gone down slightly. This is through the first week in May. And um, man, it is really hot in here. I am just dripping sweat. If you'll notice, I am definitely darker and then my kind of blue eyes just tend to pop out. And it's because we've actually got that orb in the sky, the sun, and I'm out and about all the time. Out, I'm out and about every day because um, got to get that vitamin D, right? You use 30 or 50 SPF sunscreen. I wear a hat. I just tend to get kind of tan. So 14% down in Chicago on murders, 10% down on shooting incidents. Keep in mind that is coming off of record numbers since the 1990s of murders and shootings. Overall crimes, 
Yeah, up 43%. So whatever Lightfoot was doing, it did not work. Whatever Beetlejuice, there's Beetlejuice with big, tall, new dude. Oh, Beetlejuice was horrible. Just terrible. Just terrible. All right, what else do we got going on here? Oh, there's Bernie Sanders. That guy. Hey, how does anybody get behind Bernie? He's just got some policy that you're like, what? You're you going to do what? Okay. You're going to do that? Oh, all right. All right. Well, you know, I'm in it for the fun of it. Let's just see how this goes and we'll enact some of these policies and yeah, just kind of kind of see what's happened. Shootings in the Windy City, meanwhile, remain the city's most pressing issue as figures like Johnson promise to get guns off Chicago streets. It ain't the guns. It's the people on Chicago streets shooting one another that's the main cause. Hmm. Weird. I know. That effort, however, has for the most part fallen flat because it's going to fall flat. With at least 14 people shot over the weekend alone, three of them fatally in an era where 50 shootings in a two-day span are now not far from the norm. How'd your weekend go? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, had 50 shootings. A couple of people dead. Yeah, feel bad for their families. Yeah, you going to do anything about it? No, nah, no, nah, it's pretty much just yeah, business as usual here. You got to keep the, you know, you got to keep the Morgan business. Johnson's victory this month over candidates, including Lightfoot and Vallis, who Chicago business leaders overwhelmingly endorsed due to his more free market policies, showed the so-called blue wall built by progressives in the Democrat-led city is still strong and moronic. I, I don't get it. I, what a bunch of morons. What a bunch of morons. I mean, you saw what the last progressive leader did. And now you got to be voted in another one. What's wrong with you? You people are just, you're not vo voting in the right direction, folks. That's, that's all I got to say there. Uh, showed the so-called blue wall built by progressives in the Democrat led city is still strong despite waning confidence in Lightfoot during her brief tenure. Yeah. It, it was like she came in on the exact same damn policy, right? So that didn't work out. That work worked out so poorly that, Hey, let's vote for the same. Same type dude, big taller man dude, right? Let's vote for him. I mean, this, I'm sure this will, I'm sure he'll do a better job, even though his policy is basically the same, if not worse than Beetlejuice's from the standpoint of, all right, we're going to tax the F out of these big businesses that they won't, they'll just take it. They'll just bend over and take it. I know they will. And they'll do that for a little bit and leave. So upon being inaugurated Monday, the former union rep touted values such as hard work and the Windy City's inherent soul. Okay, <laughs> let's check that out. When's the last time Chicago was known for hard work and the Windy City's inherent soul? Okay, uh, all right, but I'm reasonable. I'm willing to, if you tell me it's there, hard work ethic, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. That said, the speech did not address the potential mass migration of prominent business owners out of the city, which includes Chicago's richest billionaire, Ken Griffin, who in the fall relocated head fund Citadel to Miami. We talked about that here on the show. Going to Miami. Going to Miami. You know, say what you want about Florida, but they, you know, hurricane comes through. They rebuild. You don't ever hear about, yeah, I can't figure out how to get this done. It's actually managed pretty darn well. Shocking, I know. And so much business has moved to Miami. And you know what? On the weekends, they get rowdy in Miami. Miami Beach, South Beach, they get rowdy. There's a crew there that just, mm, they go hard. But you know what? Cops kind of keep them in line. I know. Strange. After a shooting outside the firm's downtown offices, Griffin bought a record-breaking $106.9 million waterfront estate in the Sunshine State. <laughs> Here's to you, Chicago, out of here. An increasingly popular destination for jilted blue staters. Upon announcing his plans to move his more than 1,000 staffers out of the crime-ridden metropolis, it's not yet clear if, if uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange will follow suit, but as crime continues to persist, it remains a possibility. And if the CEO is talking about that now, things aren't going to get better. And if they get taxed like that, and there's, there, there's no other way to pay for these programs that require incredible amounts of money 
and they're, they're going to fail. But you got to get the money from somewhere, right? So you can't tax the people. The people are already overtaxed, right? Your constituents that voted you in. So, hey, let's go after those big, terrible, awful corporations. Let's tax the F out of them. We'll see how this goes. Now, these are shots. These are warning shots fired even before this guy's in office. Hey, yeah, we might be a leaving. And if they do, I will podcast it right here on News for Reasonable People. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. So when this does come up, you'll get notified. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.